A really common issue that I talk about with a lot of students has to do with embouchure fatigue, where you can only play bassoon for a certain amount of time or for only a few measures at a time, and you start to feel fatigued in your mouth. This is a super common issue, and you are not alone if this is something that you deal with. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about some reasons for why this might be happening and some tips for what you can do to combat embouchure fatigue. If this is our first time meeting, my name is Dr. Natalie Law, and I'm a professional bassoonist and teacher, and I love to help people just like you get better at the bassoon. So if you're not already, make sure you're subscribed to the channel to learn more about the bassoon and improve your playing. So there are some reasons for why your embouchure may be getting fatigued after only playing for a short amount of time. And this can be a really frustrating issue. Trust me, I get it. I know a lot of people get really frustrated because you wanna play bassoon more, but you're held back by this you know, fatigue that you're feeling and you just feel like you can't. And there are some reasons for this and some things that you can do. So the first reason why you might be feeling embouchure fatigue is either you're a brand new bassoonist or you're returning to the bassoon after a long time off and your muscles are having to rebuild or build for the first time to be able to play the bassoon. Playing the bassoon, believe it or not, is a lot like playing a sport and it takes time to build up muscle strength and stamina to be able to play. And so if you haven't played before or you haven't played in a long time, you don't have the muscle mass that you need to be able to play. And it even if it's only been, you know, a week or a few weeks since you've played, you might be able to tell that you're not as strong as you were before you kind of stopped playing. So that would be the first and, and main reason why you might be struggling with embouchure fatigue. If you are struggling with it and you've been playing for a while and it's still not getting any better, there's some other things that may, may be playing into it. So stick around to, to learn about those things. What I think is the most common thing that holds us back in terms of embouchure fatigue is our reeds. And I can't stress this enough that you should be buying reeds made by a professional bassoonist. You can check out my reeds, they're linked down below, um, or find reeds that are made by somebody local to you. Um, who knows what they're doing with reeds? Reeds can be the thing that makes or breaks you as a bassoonist. If you are playing on horrible reeds, it doesn't matter if you're the most world's most amazing bassoonist, you'll sound like you've never played the instrument if you're playing on a really bad reed. And related to that and related to embouchure fatigue is if you are playing on reeds that are too resistant or sometimes called too hard, um, then you are really going to struggle because what that means is that the reed, it's too resistant. Um, typically that means that there's, there's too much cane or wood that's on the reed that, and it's too thick. And so it, you're having to press down harder to be able to get the reed to vibrate so that it'll make sound. And the harder that you have to press over time, the more fatigued you're gonna be. So ideally you wanna be playing on a reed that you don't have to put a whole lot of pressure on in order to get a good sound. If you feel like you're having to really bite down in order to just get a good sound, the reed is too hard. And this is kind of another related topic. This could be a video in and of itself. I could go into more detail on it, so let me know if you want to. But a lot of times, especially if you're a beginner bassoonist, you might hear the terms or even use the terms yourself, soft, medium, or hard reeds. And typically if you're buying like store-bought reeds, like at your local music store, they might even have a st stamp on them that says soft or hard reeds. Um, these terms for reeds are a little misleading and they're more common on other reeds. So um, maybe on single reeds like clarinet and saxophone, using different levels of hardness is helpful for the beginning player. But when it comes to bassoon reeds, the the reeds softer, the, the terms soft or hard are not really what's going on. I encourage you to think about it in terms of the reed is resistant or it might feel hard. The reed is resistant, it's difficult to play and it's not just letting you freely blow through the instrument or it's not resistant enough. It's so free blowing that you just like it's paper thin and you're, you're um, free blowing and it's 
it's it's so free blowing that you can't you don't have any control because the read is just wild. Um, I encourage you to think about reads in terms of those terms and not think in terms of soft and hard because those can be a little bit um, inaccurate and misleading terms to use when it comes to reads. Um, and when you get into higher levels of bassoon playing and bassoon read making, um, professionals don't typically use those terms. It's typically a term that's used by mass retailers and it's not always helpful. Um, so typically the read is too resistant or it's not resistant enough. We always want a balanced read that it's not too resistant, but it also gives you a, enough cane so that there is some control and it's not just wildly playing whatever you blow into it. Playing on good reads is so important. And if you're buying reads from a professional bassoonist um, and they're not, you know, you, you frequently feel like you're having to bite the reads or you feel like they're not just easily playing for you, that is, that is a sign that you might wanna try reads by someone else or you might want to reach out to the read maker and ask, you know, if they can make some adjustments to your read or if they have any suggestions. A lot of times as read makers, we can adjust reads when we're making them. You know, if you're struggling with something in particular, we can do things to the read that make that particular issue a little bit easier. So I really encourage you try a bunch of different reads, reach out to read makers, get suggestions. If you can get in with a lesson with somebody who can talk to you about your reads. So having good reads is like uh, the number one thing. And more often than not, this is kind of the main issue with embouchure fatigue that I find. Because once you get on a good read, you're like, oh, this is so much easier. Another common culprit for having embouchure fatigue has to do with your embouchure itself. Most of the time what's happening is that you are doing something incorrectly with your embouchure that's causing you to do more work with the muscles in your embouchure and ultimately is tiring you out much more quickly than what you should be. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my video on how to make a bassoon embouchure and about my three-step process for creating a bassoon embouchure. And that's truly what I believe in for having a good embouchure. The biggest takeaway from that video though is using the whistle face. If there's one thing to think about with your embouchure, it's creating that whistle face. So whether you can whistle or not, pretending like you can, um, is gonna help you create the right bassoon embouchure. Um, and the reason is that whistle face brings the corners of your lips in and forward um, into more of an appropriate bassoon embouchure. A really common issue is that we get flat lips like this where the corners are pulled back and then you don't have as much control on the reed and you're having to bite down more in order to get that control and that just doesn't work. One thing that you can do to make sure that you really are using the whistle face embouchure and trying to maintain that on while you're playing is to actually whistle and then while you're whistling, put the reed in your mouth and then play a note and do not change anything. I know it's like, oh, when I get to the reed, I'm supposed to change something. No, change nothing uh, when you transition from the whistle face to the playing. So. So yes, I had to push a little bit more air through to get air to go through the horn, but I didn't change anything in my the structure of my embouchure. So maintain that whistle face. And what that does, in addition to bringing the corners in, is it creates a nice cushion for the reed with your bottom lip. And so there's a little bit more cushion in general that's gonna help you not get fatigued so quickly. Another common issue that might be causing excessive embouchure fatigue is that you are relying on your embouchure too much to make and control the sound and you're not using enough air. So how we wanna think about playing the bassoon in general is that your air, how you're blowing through the instrument, that is what's primarily controlling the sound and creating the sound and that your embouchure is just gently cushioning around the reed so that the air can move properly through the instrument. Your embouchure is one of the last things to, to change when you are trying to change something about your sound on the bassoon. Your air is the first thing that you need to go to. So one thing I like to have students do to remind them to make sure to take good breaths 
is to place your hand in front of your mouth and breathe in like a who as you're breathing in. And when you do that, you'll notice that the air in your lungs fills up your belly and it feels lower than what we do when we're typically breathing. So in case you, you know, haven't thought about this, the air that we need to play a wind instrument like the bassoon is much different than just our everyday normal breathing. Normal, normally when we're just regular breathing, we're breathing really shallow breaths that don't really go to the bottom of our lungs. And so we need to be able to use the full capacity of our lungs. That's why we do this thing to be able to know that we're that we're using our full lung capacity. So if you're wondering whether you're actually using your air code correctly and, you, and taking good breaths, do this every single time before you play, and then eventually it'll just become habit to play with that good air. Um, and that good supported air, your abs are engaged and you're always um, you're always leading with your air and not your embouchure. I recommend that if you are struggling with embouchure fatigue to not only try to incorporate the tips that I've talked about in this video, but also to watch my video on bassoon warmups, which I'll link to, and you'll see my approach to the bassoon warmup, which includes things like long tone exercises and scales. When you have a good warmup routine, when you're consistently, that you're consistently starting with every day, when you get to the meat of your practice session, whether it be stuff that you're playing for an ensemble or maybe you're working on an etude or a solo piece, no matter what you're working on, if you start with a good warm up, your embouchure is going to have warmed up appropriately and then by the time you get to that stuff, it'll be warmed up enough. So making sure that you have a good warm up routine in place is really, helpful in making sure that you're not going to fatigue quickly because you're going to be properly warming up the muscles just like you would if you were doing a sport having a good warm-up gets you ready to play the sport and finally one last tip for you if you're incorporating all of these ideas but it's not really working for you and you're just really struggling with embouchure fatigue i strongly recommend that you take a lesson if you can I offer Zoom lessons. I'll put a link down below. You just purchase the lesson and then I email you um, as soon as I see that you've purchased it and we find a time to meet on Zoom and we can have a lesson that way. Um, and whether you're working with me or another teacher, have them watch your embouchure, have them listen to you, and they might be able to diagnose something that you're doing. They may be able to talk about your reads and you know make sure that you're playing on good reads and make sure that everything's working properly because everyone's situation is unique and there might be something that you're doing or there might be another root problem to the embouchure fatigue issue that you're maybe not aware of and a teacher can help you figure that out. So I recommend if you're still struggling with all of this, definitely get in a lesson with a teacher who can listen to you and give you more advice to your specific situation. If this video was helpful for you, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and comment down below. Are you struggling with embouchure fatigue? Have you found any particular tips that help you overcome that initial fatigue? Um, or what other questions do you have related to this topic that um, you'd like to see answered on this channel?